Like today would have been our anniversary, right? So we would have been open here from like, like two, three o'clock. This would have been filling up. You kind of enter from over there. Then, you know, you kind of walk in, you go into like our, uh, the main room. It's insane. I think normally on a night like this, there'd probably be about 4,000, 5,000 people here. Then this is the terrace, this is my room. Okay. I've been the resident in here for like 10 years. It's pretty crazy since I was like 24. How does it feel looking at it now, emptied out? It's pretty, it's pretty crazy actually. It's like, there's been so many memories here and so many DJs who've kind of like really made their way from Jamie Jones, Martinez Brothers, Luciano, Dice. It's like such a cultural center of what has become electronic music for the past 15, 20 years, you know? When Seth Troxler played Ibiza's closing parties at the end of the 2019 summer season, no one had any idea that the giant dance clubs that made the island famous wouldn't open at all in 2020. But thanks to COVID-19, dancing is now banned on the island and the future of the scene is uncertain. What do you think happens to electronic music if Ibiza becomes somewhere that isn't a place people go out clubbing? I think Ibi electronic music loses more of its underground aesthetic, you know? It goes more towards that Vegas, towards that cheap kind of like bottle service. Um, curated to the rich thing. And electronic music's always been for the underground. The beats has always been the center point of what all global trends are. Every major electronic music musician and major brand kind of really starts its, its kind of its thing here. While the rest of Spain was devastated by the coronavirus, Ibiza only reported a couple hundred cases and a dozen deaths. The pandemic hit in the low season, when far fewer people were on the island than in the summer, and a nationwide lockdown stopped travel there. Before tourists could return, strict public health measures were introduced to try and keep the virus under control. The Ibiza Rocks Hotel Club did manage to open in July, two months later than usual, once the 2,500-person dance floor was regularly filled to capacity. Now they're lucky to get 700 people lounging on daybeds. We're still at the edges of, um, of the season, just kicking in now in this very strange year that we've got. And are people supposed to be wearing face masks around the pool, or is it, does it depend on what they're doing? Well, the rules are, if you're walking around the hotel, you should wear a face mask. But if you're sat on a bed eating and drinking, you're not expected to wear one. And what about dancing? Are you allowed to dance? It's turned into Footloose, the town that you can't dance in. So um, dancing is definitely just um, not encouraged at all by the authorities. How are people clubbing and partying and how is it different? I think it's more subdued, it's like more laid back. Um, and as a result, we're, we're looking for the DJs or the performers to play, play music that isn't going to make people just jump up and create a wild party. So it, it, it's, it's definitely different like that. And looking forward to like next year or the year after next, what do you think Ibiza's gonna look like? I, I, I think there's gonna be change and it still remains to be seen whether dance floors will be viable. If there's no vaccine, putting packing people on a dance floor is a very difficult concept to understand. Do you think some people prefer it like this? Yeah, there is a section of the population and a section of the politicians that the idea of an island that closes at two in the morning is a dream to them. This isn't unique to pandemic times. Some locals have been frustrated with over-tourism for a long time, even though the industry also makes up 90% of the local economy. Do you go clubbing yourself? I'm too old now. Uh, Durante mucho tiempo sí que he disfrutado de, de, de la vida nocturna y demás, pero hoy en día ya es. Do you think there are some people in Ibiza who might prefer it if the clubs were closed for longer and the tourism here wasn't so dependent on people who came to party in Ibiza? Este año, eh, dada la crisis, pues nos ha venido la oportunidad de hablar mucho más en profundidad de una Ibiza que no depende exclusivamente de, del turismo de masa, digamos, del turismo de discoteca. Sí, sí, sí. Si al final conseguimos, que es lo que estamos buscando hace mucho tiempo, conseguimos que Ibiza no solamente sea conocida 
por su ocio, sino que sea conocida por los otros productos, que es un poco lo que hemos hablado durante la conversación. Eh, aquí tenemos, por ejemplo, turismo familiar, que muchas veces la gente se sorprende de que puedan venir familias a Ibiza, y en Ibiza es zona de naturaleza, es zona para disfrutar de otro tipo de, de, otro tipo de productos que podemos ofrecer. What do you think is going to happen to Ibiza in the future? You know, if they don't find a vaccine or if the clubs aren't allowed to reopen, what do you see? I don't see Ibiza lasting in a very long-term situation with future tourism. If Ibiza really wants to survive the future, they need to reopen, reopen to beaches, reopen to young people, and reopen to the original foundations that the island stood for, and that was freedom, you know? Anita built her reputation spinning in Ibiza's biggest clubs. Since the new regulations, she hasn't played to a packed crowd here. So you were born in Ibiza. Do you think there are some local people here who would prefer that, you know, clubbing takes a bit of a backseat in terms of tourism? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's a shame because we were an island with no resources. I, I remember conversations with my grandma and granddad and they were working really hard to grow family and because here you have fish or countryside. Something started here on the island with the hippie movement and then in the 80s, 90s, the electronic music started to be a reality. So we discovered this, this way of, of life. I think we all in Ibiza live good because we have tourism. Do you think that the people who are still partying on the island, you know, breaking the rules, having private parties? I'm, I receive WhatsApps. I, I'm invited to three, four, five parties per week, private parties. There are a lot of buildings in Ibiza, a lot of big houses, uh, which has bunkers like clubs. Yeah. And because this started because someone allowed to make these kind of houses mm. and was not the industry, you know? And all these houses are now on fire, doing parties. And I, 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 I'm not agree with that because the clubs are totally closed. Couple of measures before we get in, alcohol in gel. Mm -hmm. And before getting in, you need to measure the temperature. All right, follow me then. So we're here, we do have the swimming pool and the, the common facilities. Those buildings are where the rooms are. And in this huge dorm is where we used to organize the venues and where DJs used to, used to play. Pasha Group has been operating in Ibiza for more than 50 years and is among the largest leisure groups on the island. But this season, its famous nightclub is closed, so the company has been forced to rely on its other venues, like this upmarket hotel. The nightlife industry is completely stopped, so the challenges will be to go through this somehow crisis and be ready and be prepared for 2021. So, but it's tough, you know, like, uh, it's tough to have to pay certain expenses, but you don't have the ability to open. So I think that is like surviving across 2020 mm. and wish the best for 2021. Can you see an Ibiza without tourism as such a big part of its economy? Or do you think it's basically in Ibiza's lifeblood to be a tourism destination? I think it's a tourism destination, and this is not a situation that happens only in Ibiza. I think this is for the Balearic Islands, um, but it's also the same in, in, in other parts of uh, Spain, you know? It is about Spain. A good proportion of the GDP of Spain comes from tourism. So if this uh, is restricted by the lockdown, of course, Spain as an overall is going to, is going to suffer. Mm. 